Do you use black marker or black colored pencils to make things dark? Do you think that's a weird question? Hmm, are you now wondering how I color black without using black markers or black colored pencils? Today, I'd like to tell you why I rarely use true black and how I think you can benefit greatly by limiting your access to black art supplies. If you asked me to pinpoint the most life-changing moment of my artistic journey, for most artists, that would be a tough question. There's so many little breakthroughs that change who we are as artists, it's hard to narrow it down to one pivot point. But my defining moment is pretty easy. I was in an advanced level drawing class with my favorite instructor. It was early in the semester, but I knew I was acing that class. I was working with colored pencils, making photorealistic leaves. It was a close-up of leaves on a dark background. And while I don't remember being overly fond of my black colored pencil, as I was working, the teacher gently removed the black pencil from my hand, mid-stroke. He put it in his pocket, and he told me that I could have it back at the end of the term. At first, I was stunned. I was in the middle of this large pencil painting, and I was feeling really great about the project. So how was I supposed to finish? How was I going to shade the leaves? And what about that deep, dark background? That stuff was all black. I went home that afternoon so frustrated, because forget about the leaf project, it was slowly sinking in that I was looking at another two months of class without access to a very important color. Who works without black? Now when I get mad, I get stubborn, and I don't like to lose. So if I wasn't allowed to use the color black, I was darn well going to figure out how to make my own black. Wimpy pastel projects are so not my style. I love contrast. The days that followed set the tone for my lifetime of artistry. It changed me, and it changed how I see the world. Here's how banning black from your supply list can improve your art and your artistry. If you think back to the first box of crayons that you owned, you probably had eight colors. Now maybe you were one of the lucky kids who got a bigger box of colors, but I know at some point, either at school or sitting in a waiting room somewhere, you had to deal with that set of eight. We all did. So it's not surprising that we classify everyday objects based on a very limited range of colors. Water is blue, clouds are white, and it doesn't matter that the blue ocean is constantly changing colors. It doesn't matter that clouds are almost never white. Most of us still categorize everything according to simple crayon colors, which is why we fall prey to the trap of black. When something is dark, we just assume it's black. The night sky, someone's hair, or your favorite pair of boots. But are they really black? Really? Do you see black or are you taking a mental shortcut? We call a lot of things black that are not actually black. The dark sky is usually more of a deep blue, but I've seen purple in it and even green in the night sky. And even things that are dyed or painted black black, they're usually warm or cool blacks or even a really dark gray with definite tones of something else going on. But we take mental shortcuts. It's easier to call the dog black than to investigate it further. These shortcuts can cause problems in your artwork. Automatically grabbing a black Copic can cause serious problems. First off, pure black is startling. It draws attention. So the black nose on a polar bear grabs your eye because it's so stark and different than everything else around it. Is the black nose really the star of the photo? And black can form a visual vortex, a black hole. 
many colorers default to a black background when they want the background to be invisible. Instead, our eye is usually drawn towards that black background. That's the opposite of what you wanted, right? Streaky marker strokes or your uneven paint jobs? Those become a lot more noticeable when you're using flat black. And lastly, when you color an object black, you're limiting your options. How do you shade something that's been colored Copic 110? You can't get blacker than black. Black objects tend to look flatter because the only thing you can do is highlight it. And highlighting is only halfway to dimensional. You're missing the shade. When you remove black from your color resources, you'll find yourself looking a lot more closely at the dark zones of your subjects. No more assumptions. We can't call the deep shade black anymore, so we're forced to think deeper about color. Is your dark zone warm or cool? If you've never thought about the temperature before, losing your black forces you to consider it. Prismacolor Dark Brown and Prismacolor 90% French Gray, they're both pretty darned dark. But neither will work well in this winter scene where everything has a cool cast. Always using black meant you never had to think about that before. But temperature matters. So does value. You just can't grab the darkest marker or darkest paint in your collection and use that straight up as a substitute for black. Your dark blue may be darker than all your other blues, but if it's not the right value, it won't substitute for black, which means you end up having to mix your own black substitutes. As soon as you start mixing colors, you're going to understand color better. You become a mad scientist in a color lab, learning and growing from your experiments. You stop caring about the names of colors. Green or blue or brown or gray doesn't matter you just start choosing colors based on what is dark enough to get the job done. Here's the best part. Because you're suddenly looking at the temperature and values of your new color mixes, you'll find that you have a better sense of temperature and value for all of your other color families. You'll be able to locate cool undertones in some of your yellows and warmth in your greens or purples and you'll notice right away when the value of pink you've chosen is wrong for the center of a rose. Plus, you increase your color mixing skills. Winner, 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 all around. Remember how mad I was when I was banned from using that black pencil? That was back then. Now I'm just grateful. By removing my black pencil, I was given a great gift. It was one of the best things that anyone has ever done for me. Not just in art, it changed my life. We've all heard the saying that necessity is the mother of invention. It means that if we have everything we need right at our fingertips, we'll never do anything creative or important. You'll have to need or want something in order to get off your butt and make it. Every great invention, every book ever written, every song, every piece of art or technology or anything, you have to need it to make it. I'd be a totally different artist today if I hadn't lost my black pencil. I understand color better because I lost my black. I mix color better because of what I learned trying to find new blacks. I also handle artistic challenges and setbacks better. I'm less fearful in my art because I lost my black. I'm also more artistic because I lost my black. Everyone and their dog has access to black markers and pencils. It's the easiest thing in the world to color yet another cat with a black marker. The fact that I probably would use deep blue, or even add some purple, that sets my cat apart from all of the other black copycats. My deep dark areas are more artistic, more expressive, and more creative than they would be 
because now they're different than everyone else who's still using a black pencil. You're never going to be distinctive if you're using the same damn color as everybody else. By limiting your color palette, you stop coloring or painting like a zombie. In forcing yourself to find new blacks, you're going to develop a style and a sense of color that's unique to you. Here's the other thing though. Even though I learned how to work without black, I still occasionally use black. Not a lot, but I do use it. And when I do, there's a very good reason. I try to use black with a reverence now, with intentionality. I'm smarter about my use of black because it's not my default setting. When I add black, I mean it. And here's the other wonderful artistic side effect. I never use black straight out of the tube or just one black pencil or marker. Flat black actually looks a little weird and unnatural to me now. I can't not mix something else in. I add something cool or warm or unexpected. I put bold color underneath my blacks. I put more color over the top of my blacks, changing them from mundane to my own special language. My blacks are not like anyone else's because I see black in a non-standard way. In losing one color, I found an artistic voice. So here's my wish for you. If you're still watching this video, then you have an interest in art and realistic coloring. But odds are that you've got a family, a job, and a life. You're not heading off to art school anytime soon. You maybe do the art thing once a week or a couple times a month. So I'm not going to recommend that you go complete cold turkey and throw away all of your black pens, pencils, and paints. But I do think that you can be more mindful about your use of black in your next few projects. If you're taking a coloring class or online lesson, look at how and when the instructor is using black. If you're following a blog or a free video tutorial, look at the use of black and how it affects the final results. Ask yourself, is this a wise use of black? It's okay to question the advice you're getting. My hope is that you'll take color more seriously in your art, not just following along with the project, copying a recipe, and duplicating someone else's color voice. When you make it different, that's when you'll grow as an artist. In adult coloring, there's a lot of talk about practice. Do more projects, follow more tutorials, take more classes. But is the goal to just finish a lot of stuff? Or is it to actually learn from these projects? Until you explore color, until you search for why and how color works, until you experiment to find out what happens if you don't use green or you don't use pink or you don't use black in a project, you'll always be just coloring. Limiting your use of black is one step on the road to artistry. You'll find that your definition of color grows beyond the crayon box names. You'll create fewer distractions within your projects. No more black holes or dark objects which can't be shaded properly. You'll grow in your understanding of how temperature and value work. You'll mix better colors and you'll do it with more confidence. And depriving yourself of a commonly used tool creates the kind of scarcity which encourages greater creativity, invention, and out-of-the-box thinking. You don't have to ban the black forever. Just try doing without it in your next project and see how it feels. And if you come up with a good pseudo black, then start using more of that in your future projects. To find a unique voice and a distinctive style, you can't keep using the same crayon box. You were born to be different, so start coloring different. Black isn't bad but you can do better.